Lord, we thank you and we praise you. We give you all the glory and the honor for this time of seeking your word, God, on Sunday school, God. We thank you for those that are joining us here and those that are joining us by the airwaves this morning on our social media, Facebook and online, YouTube and what have you. We thank God for them joining us this morning, those that are not able to make it out. Lord, we thank you for them joining us today, God. We thank you for moving by your power and by your anointing today. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for having your way, Lord. We thank you for allowing everything to flow in decency and in order today, Lord. We thank you for healing, delivering, and setting free today, God. For we give you all the glory and all the honor that is due your name today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So this morning, amen, in our lessons, um, Brother Joseph, can you tell me what your topic says? The title. Ministry. Samuel's Call and Ministry. And Brother Josh, what is the topic in your lesson today? The title. God. Oh, God has a job for Samuel. God has a job for Samuel. Amen. So our young people, we're on one accord with the adult lesson this morning. So they're both letting us know about our brother Samuel. Number one, um, God has a call and ministry. In other words, ministry is your job. God has a job for you to do. Amen. And what we all have to realize is that just because um, we're not behind the podium and we're not behind the pulpit doesn't mean God doesn't have a job for us to do. Because we're going to learn about Samuel and how young he was. And, and, and matter of fact, I'll make sure I send y'all the link because, you know, in our class, our young people class, we like to watch the Super Book or whatnot that goes with it. And you will see how young Samuel was. If I'm not mistaken, he was seven years old when the Lord called him. Wow. And so yeah, how, many, how many of us are seven years old and younger? Nobody raised their hand. So that means all of our young people are older than seven years old. And what does that lead you to believe, Sister Shekinah? Just take a stab at it. If Samuel, if God called Samuel at seven years old, how old are you? How old? Fourteen. So what does that let you know about you? A little bit louder. What you say? Girl, you better holler. I know you can talk louder than that. He can do the same for you. So that means you can be used also. All of us in here are qualified Amen. All of us in here are qualified to be used by the Lord. Amen. And one thing that we'll learn about Samuel is, um, Samuel, you now when you do some research in your own time, you'll learn that Samuel was dedicated to God from an early age. His mother prayed for him. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to make him go that way. Listen, very careful. Listen, very careful. Or be used by somebody, you got to be under somebody. You got to be submissive to somebody. Now you go to school, you submit to a teacher. When you come to church, you must join. You must be involved in all the things to be no one be a, you must be a member before anybody can use you. You go to have you understand that? You just gonna come out free and say, hey, oh, hey, you got it. you gotta come and set yourself down and learn that Come say, I like the church, I'm going to make it be a member. Because I, I see something I can do. Not the church give me all kind of, I see something I can do. You understand what I'm saying? That's why it's so important for you to be a part of something. Come and come and come and never be a, a part of nothing. You just come and read, look at the cow, and get on the milk, and, 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 and cow die, I don't care. I don't need no food. I don't need no, uh, no, 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 no. Don't hope no nothing to try to be like a the pride the key. Got it? Got it? Okay, so whenever you I wanna bring it um bring it down to layman terms. Whenever you um decide she kinda of, summertime is coming. I'll I'll work with you a minute. Brother Josh, Brother Joseph, y'all listen in as well, you can chime in. So I wanna say it like this. And Joseph, 
Would you mind grabbing my glass and out of my Thank you. Whenever you, for example, if you wanted to be a cheerleader, and throughout the um, Aiken County, they have a lot of cheerleading schools, um, summer camps, what have you. If you do what, it, would stand, what would stand out to you that would say, this is the one, thank you, sir, this is the one that I've chosen. Joe's the same for you. If there was a drum camp you wanted to go to, what kind of research would you pick up the first thing that you find? Brother Josh, if you want to play the drums and you're looking for a drum camp, what were the first, if you're looking for a drum teacher, okay? If each and every person, whatever we're looking for, if we're looking for a particular place that we want to learn from, what lets us know this is the place that I want? Go ahead, Brother Josh. Bring it to your life. Give me one thing, because I want to save some for the other two. Thank you, Shakara. Meet me on up here. I see what you like a lead to the place you're coming, you're trying to go to, to know that it is it. Okay, one more time. Like, oh, like a meeting at the place to get an application to see. But it's in different places. How do you choose which, which drum place you want to go and learn from? You read the reviews. Huh? Reviews. Look at the reviews. Okay, thank you. Shakai, what you got? Because, yeah, you can look at the reviews, and that's a good one, Brother Josh. But what about you, Shakai? What do you look at? You can look at, like, um, you could look at the way the places are designed um, to see, like, which place you would be more comfortable at. Okay. Joseph, what about you? The ratings, you look at the ratings. Anything else? Okay, so whenever I'm choosing a particular place that I'm gonna learn from, when we were looking for Joseph Driving School, yes, you turn your mic off, yes, we looked at the ratings, and this ratings for a particular place, uh, we choose, chose um, Aiken Driving Academy. And we chose them because not one, not only did they have high ratings, and catch this, the, the pay was higher than the rest of them. But, thank you. The pay was also higher than the rest of them, but the ratings is what I looked at. I looked at what people had to say. I looked at the curriculum and how I could understand it. Thank you, Brother Josh. I looked at the curriculum and how I can understand it. So whenever I'm choosing a place that I want to be taught from, I'm choosing a school, I look at the material. How is the material being taught? Because although they may have good reviews, I want to make sure, can I sample the material? Can I sample what they're being taught? Even when I'm looking at different translations or Bible plans and things like that, I look at it to see if it's something that I can understand first. So does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. And then I sign on the dotted line. Once we sign with this driving school, we committed our money and our time to a particular task. The task was to get the driver's license. So now once you sign with a cheerleading um, camp, once you sign with a drum camp, once you sign with a drum camp, you're now accountable to the rules that are in that place for you to learn. You're saying, by the time I leave this place, I want to be able to drive, I want to be able to um, play the drums, this is what I should be able to do. When you come to a particular ministry, same thing, and we're going to move quickly because I want to stay with the focus of the lesson. When you come to a particular ministry, you're coming to see, I'm visiting, mm, I'm able to learn the word a lot better. They break down the word. I enjoy the worship. I like being able to take things back that I can learn. I like that they have a welcoming spirit. What things are you looking at to help your spirit man is what is the reason why you submit yourself to someone. Now, um, Samuel's mother submitted him back to God. And Eli was the one that was over Samuel. So we're going to move quickly now and talk a little bit about this lesson, okay? So let's grab our lessons, and we're at 1 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. It should be for y'all. There it is. 1 Samuel 3 and 1. And even in y'all young people's the youth class, you also have the same lesson. So we're all able to follow along. Mm -hmm. We're all on the same page. So let's talk about this. Verse number one is what we're going to read from first. It says, and the child Samuel, read it along with me, and the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. 
And the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. Now let me just kind of set us up and let us know uh, what's going on in this lesson. Give me one second. Chapter 3 and verse 4. All right, and um, y'all know I like translations, so we're going to be going a little bit back and forth. Um, but no, this is a God's Word translation. Now, this one is, this. let me read this first verse, and then we'll talk a little bit. The boy Samuel was serving the Lord under Eli. In those days, a prophecy from the Lord was rare, meaning it did not happen often. Visions were infrequent. So these things did not happen often. But it's about to happen to Samuel. Okay, so let's set up with what's going on. Remember I told you about Samuel. Samuel was dedicated to the Lord from birth. When he was born, his mother dedicated him back to the Lord. And so Samuel, once he was weaned off his mom, meaning once he no longer needed the nutrition and mom's milk, what have you, she took him to the temple and gave him over to Eli, the man of God, the priest. And this is where he lived at. This is where he learned at. He was in the temple every day, learning how to be who it was that God called him to be. So just wanted to set us up to see what was going on. Now, as uh, Samuel is getting older, we're going to see what happens when the Lord begins to start the call. Because y'all, the young people, y'all remember that y'all lesson was God has a job for Samuel. And the adults was Samuel's call and ministry. So the Lord had to call him first. Uh -huh. All right. And this is where the call is going to happen. And a couple of things we're going to point out as we're listening for the call. Number one. Um, let's read verse 2. Everybody's with me? First Samuel 3 and 2. And it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place and his eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. So what was taking place here, um, Josh? His eyes was waxing dim. So what is this telling you about Eli? Is he young? Is he older? He's getting older now. And so he had to really rely on the Lord. Because one thing about it, who served under Eli? Uh, oh, Samuel. Samuel was the one that served under Eli. And so he had to make sure that he heard from the Lord so he can minister and do the things he needs to do correctly. But we'll talk about that shortly. Let's go to verse number three. And ere the lamp of God went out, in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep. That the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. Now, as we look in our, uh, when we look in our lesson for the young people, we'll see that the Lord called him multiple times. He called him multiple times, and, and Samuel did not know that it was the Lord. So he went to Eli, thinking Eli called him, because at that time he didn't recognize that that was the Lord's voice calling him. And so let me go a little bit in my translation, and we'll talk a little bit and come back to verse 5. One night, Eli was lying down in his room. His eyesight had begun to fail so that he couldn't see very well at all. The lamp in God's temple hadn't gone out yet. And Samuel was asleep in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was kept. Then the Lord called Samuel. Here am I, Samuel responded. He ran to Eli and said, Here am I, you called me. He didn't recognize yet the voice of the Lord. So there's something very, uh, very um, interesting that's about to happen. Amen. Brother Joseph, are you on your job? What's supposed to be going around right now? Amen. Good morning. Brother Joseph got some lessons coming for you. Amen. He about to be fired. Praise the Lord. <laughs> he about to be fired and rehired. Yes, Brother Joseph's coming with two lessons. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Amen. Can we get a bottle of water for you? All right. 
Amen. Good morning, good morning. So just reviewing where we are, um, our topic is Samuel's call in ministry. Amen. Amen. So we're talking about how Samuel was um, dedicated to the Lord from birth and how he was left in the temple to learn under Eli, the priest. And this is where we are now. We're reading about how Samuel, he's uh, seven years old at this point, and he does not know the voice of God. And the Lord is calling him, and he doesn't know it's the Lord calling him. And see, this is why we cannot dismiss um, people in our life that has experience in God. Because sometimes the Lord will say something to us, and we don't even know what it is. Because the, the Lord was speaking to Samuel, saying, Samuel, Samuel, I'm looking at Josh, Josh, Josh. And it's an unfamiliar voice, and he's like, well, what's that? Who that's calling me? So... Samuel goes and do what he's supposed to do. He went to Eli. He know there ain't nobody here but me and Eli. And it, it sounds familiar. So I'm thinking it's Eli calling me. So he go run to Eli. And he says to him, yes, here am I. Now we're in verse number five. Here I am. Thank you, Brother Josh. Here I am. So let's look at verse five and see what Eli says. In verse five, and he ran unto Eli and said, here am I. For thou callest me. And he said, I call not. Lie down again. And he went and laid down. So he's frustrated. He's like, look now. Every time poor Eli, you know, Eli is already, what's the Eli's condition, Josh? Well, he's what now? He's um, eyes are His eyes are getting dim and he's older. Yeah, he's older. Yeah, he's getting older. So, if, who keep getting woke up every time the Lord calls Samuel? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> My Josh, I knew he had it. I knew he had it. So, bless his heart, the priest Eli is older, and every time Samuel get up because he's hearing the Lord call him, he going to run to Eli and bless it. Eli mm -hmm. finally fell asleep, and now he woke back up again because... Samuel does, he's just like, hey, I'm sorry, you keep calling me. Eli, no, dear, I'm not calling you. Please go back to sleep. This is where we are. Let's move to verse 6. Okay. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I call not, my son. Lie down again. Verse 7. Bless his heart. Nobody will speak tonight. And let me just say this because as I'm, as I'm ministering, I'm hearing the Lord say some things as well. Whenever God has a call on your life, it not only affects you, but it affects those that are around you. Because we have to understand something. And cannot be honest with every level that we go to in God. The Lord is adding on more pieces to the puzzle of our purpose. Yeah. Because he didn't give Samuel everything in day one. Because mm -hmm. he's a child. There's things he's not going to understand yet. So as Samuel grows, he's adding more pieces to the puzzle, more understanding. You know what I'm saying? He's staying in there. He's learning from Eli. Yeah. Yeah. He learned from the other priests. So you look at a person. I look at um, how the young people pray today. This morning in prayer, they had their own prayer that they prayed today. They, nobody was shy. I remember when we first gave them the mic, everybody was, oh, I don't know how, I don't know how. Now they come up, got like, let me do my prayer, this is such and such. And I'm looking at the boldness in them, the godly boldness, not pride, but boldness. They're coming on up. They've gotten used to their voice, hearing the Lord speaks to them, them speaking to the Lord, them praying for people. They've gotten used to that. And so the same thing with Samuel. As we see what will happen when Samuel gets familiar with the voice that calls him. Amen. And so that's just one of the points that I want us to bring out is that not, we're not going to always understand everything day one. Let me be honest. I don't understand the full purpose of what God wants me to do. I'm still learning. I still got to stay on my knees. I still get it wrong sometimes. I'm still seeking God to learn my identity in Him. Because as you grow, each, if each of the young people today have talked about the next grade that they're going to. When you go in that next grade, there's next things that you're going to have to learn. And you're going to build on what you learned from the last grade. 
So this is why it's important that we stay connected to God. We stay connected to reading his word. We stay connected to the leaders that God has poured information from us. And we don't just rely on the leader alone, but we go and see God for ourselves. Reading his word, praying, and seeing what he has to say to us. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, to, 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 to teach it to, to the congregation, everybody knows a husband who knows his wife. The mother knows his child. You can't, you can't just say, say, my child did do this to my That mother, when you go to school, she knows what kind of child she got. And the teacher, everybody loaded up her, he did this and he did this. She can say, my child don't do that. He, she knows what her child do more. And she knows when he get out, where he gonna be like. The same way he is in the church. Your record come from him. Like I'm on a job. You go pop on a big hip, a uh, uh, big double job. How do you do the church? They take everything. So it's good that you it's good that you got a good note, a good record. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You can hold that, you can turn it off, just hold it over there. As a matter of fact, I see you already got one brother Josh is gonna come and clean that mic for you. Amen. So let's move on uh, to verse number seven. Verse 7 says, and if anyone has questions, comments, feel free to raise your hand. We'll jump right in. Verse 7 says, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. Remember that we said that he's still getting familiar with the voice of the Lord. This is why, thank you, Brother Josh, this is why we can't compete with other people trying to be like everybody else. We got to be content and happy with the journey that God has for our life. Because Samuel has not arrived there yet. It ain't no need of him trying to be like Eli. Amen. There's no need of him trying to be like everybody else. He's not on that level yet. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Sister Shekinah is going to pass out the youth lessons. Amen. So in verse number 8, And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. Amen. And he arose and went to Eli and said, here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. So here we go. We would, they would have gone on back and forth all night had Eli not gotten the, the God sense to say, wait a minute, something else is taking place here. God is calling this young man. Amen. But look at this. He had to be attached. Yeah. And I want to go back to this. He was attached to the man of God. Yeah that his mom placed him under. Mm -hmm. Because remember we said that Eli is seven years old. And from birth, he has been um, placed in the temple. Samuel, thank you, Co-Pastor. Samuel is seven years old, and from birth, he has been placed in the temple. Yeah. Living in the temple, learning the things of the Lord. But there are some things that he's not going to learn until he's time for him to step over that earth. No one taught him, Samuel, this is how you identify the Lord's voice. Right. There are some things we're not going to learn, and it's not going to be in a textbook format. There are some things we're going to learn by experience. Sometimes we're going to have prayer. Sometimes we're going to have uh, warfare that comes. Sometimes things are not going to happen right in our home, in our school, in our mind. And we're going to seek call pastor up. Call go pastor, call your parents, whatever. Look, something going on, I ain't seen this before. And see, Samuel had been being taught, but he ain't never seen this before. Amen. So he had to go back to the one that was over him, which is Eli, and say, look, you know, I'm here. I'm listening. What do you want? You keep calling me. And Eli had to go to God and say, whoa, okay, I get it. I see what's going on here. It is now the set time for you to speak with him. Yeah. And so he told him this time, in verse number 9, we're moving there. Verse number 9, Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So it took the one that he was under to let him know what was going on. Amen. 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 So Samuel went and lay down in his place. He waited for instruction. Even though Eli was getting older, his eyes was getting weaker, 
but he still knew the voice of the Lord. And he knew what was going on with Samuel. Samuel was younger, but he was not familiar with this God that was about to call him into action. So I just want us to see how it's important for us not to put away each other. How each of us is needed. Don't put down the young people and say, we all need you. You ain't never been through nothing. No, there's some things you going through that you can help them with. And there's some things that they are learning because technology and experiences are moving quicker. And how the enemy fought in your day may not be how the enemy fighting in their day. So it may be totally different, but it's the same devil. But if we can get on one accord and work together, now when Eli and Samuel got on one accord, and he, Eli began to understand what was going on and that God was calling him, now we can both get back to sleep. Now Eli can rest. Because now he's handing them over and said, wait a minute, it's now your time, God, need to talk to you. That means leaders, parents, we're not going to have an answer for everything. Amen. There's some things we're going to have to say, guess what, young person? Guess what, brother of God? I don't know what this is. I ain't never seen it. I've never been through it. But I tell you what, let me pray about it with you. Let's go to God. Amen. 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 So Eli had to release him right into God's hands and say, hey, you need to go to God. When he asked, when he answered you this time, seven years old, God called him. And I want to emphasize that again, as we said in the beginning of this lesson. How many in here are older than seven years old? Amen. Everybody in here is older than seven years old. Amen. So that means we all are, can be used by God. This man of God was used at the age of seven. And we're going to move quickly and get into what God called him to do at the age of seven. This is why, young people, I'm on y'all when it comes to your prayer life. I'm on y'all when it comes to you understanding this word of God. Shekinah, you with me today? Okay. I'm on y'all when it comes to you understanding your word of God because there's places you're going to be that you, I'm not going to be able to come there with you. You're going to have to know the word of God for yourself. You're going to have to know how to pray yourself. You may not be able to reach me. You may be in the school. You may be in the mall. You may be on a field trip and something goes south. And you better know how to have a prayer in life yourself and say, oh, I learned how to pray. God, I ask you to forgive me for all of my sins. Anything that's not like you. Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I'm asking you to help me, God. Cover us under your blood of protection. This is why we are a house of prayer. Amen. Praise Tabernacle Deliverance Outreach. Because the devil don't care how cute you are. He don't care who your mama is, your daddy is. He don't care what kind of clothes you got on. Amen. The enemy will come right up and look like he's your friend. The enemy will come right up in your school. He'll come right up in your job. He'll come right up in the church and look like he came to worship. But he got a whole other agenda. And this is why we got to know who we are in God. Young people, y'all with me? Everybody got a lesson? You with me? Okay. Amen. I want y'all to understand. Because this young man was on fire for God when God put his word in him. At seven years old, he's about to do something that's going to shake the foundation. He's about to do something. God called, raise up this baby to speak to a nation because Eli was out of the will of God. Amen. This is the whole reason why Samuel was raised up. Amen. Good morning, my brother. Samuel was raised up at the age of seven. And we're about to hear what God put in the words of a baby's mouth. We call him a baby. But we cannot limit someone by their age and say that God can't use them. Oh, just because he's too young or he's too this or this or that. No, no, no. Be mindful. Be careful what you say. Because even though he needed Eli to lead him to God. Amen. He, had, he couldn't dismiss who led him to God. Samuel needed Eli because he didn't even know the voice of God. Now that he knows the voice of God, God has something to say to him. Amen. Now we're in verse 1 Samuel 3 and verse number, then we jump into 19. Your next verse in your lesson should be verse 19. Amen. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. Why? Because Samuel grew. 
Let's just stop right there. Samuel grew. Can I come back to this place? I want to come back to the point that we made earlier because Holy Spirit said we need to drill that once again as we move quickly through the rest of the lesson. The Lord wanted me to drill through that once again is that everybody's journey is not the same. We have to stop trying to be like everybody else here. Aaliyah, uh, Josiah, Joseph. We got to stop trying to be like everybody else. The reason why I'm talking to y'all because y'all see more on social media and other things than most of us see. Y'all young people see more than the rest of us see. And if we're not careful, we'll think that even in God that I should look like that by now. Or I should be further along like them. I should be like them. No, God has a journey for you. Amen. You are not in competition spiritually with nobody. Amen. You're not in competition in the world with anybody. The Bible even tells us to mark the perfect man, behold the upright. And what that simply means is if I'm going to copy a cat, I'm going to copy the right cat doing the right things. That's right. But yet That's still, I'm not trying to be like them. I'm saying if God did it for them, he can do it for me. Now let me seek God. Let me find out what my journey is with the Lord. Because it may not be behind a pulpit. Maybe your ministry is helping the homeless. Maybe your ministry is helping the young people. Maybe your ministry is in the nursing home. But as we seek God, he'll show us the purpose for our life. And I go back to the topic of the lesson, which in the adult class, your topic is Samuel's call and ministry. Yeah. Two things, the call and the ministry, the call and the job. Because in the young people's lesson, it says God has a job for Samuel. And so, number one, he had to, uh, he had to answer the call. Because even when you're given a job opportunity, you have to accept the job. And then when you accept the job, you accept the terms and conditions. Oh, and what the terms and conditions of the job, it may say your uniform look like this. It may say you need to be here on time doing this, doing that. My brother said he already know. He a hard working man. He already know. We got to get rest. I need to be in the bed at this time because I got to be up. Got to do this. Got to do that. Hey, we got to do Okay, come with your bed because I got to work tomorrow. We got to hit that clock. Why? Because you don't get paid if you don't show up. Yeah. So guess what? In God, we don't get God's blessings if we don't show up. This is a job all by itself. When we're living for the Lord... This is not stop just because I'm off, I'm sick, I'm tired. No, this worship, this um, praise, this life of holiness, this life of prayer, not a prayer life, but a life of prayer, don't stop because I leave out the walls. No, when I'm walking in a car, I'm still thinking about the goodness of Jesus. I'm on the way to the dollar store. And God, I just thank you, God, you've been good today. Or this is on my mind, and this is concerning me. That was prayer. I'm talking to my creator. Amen. It ain't that deep. But Samuel proved. Here's where we are. Samuel proved. Study to show yourself approved unto God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. And you can help from him. Amen. And so, in your religion, whenever you get the opportunity, I do want you to read um, the whole life of Samuel. Or either there's a super book chapter. Super book season three. And you'll see the one on Sam. Y'all know I love Super Bowl. So don't, don't y'all looking at me? Don't do me. I love my Super Bowl now. That's a Christian cartoon. So I love Super Bowl. Some of my older ones look at me like, "What is Super Bowl?" She always talking about that. That is my Christian cartoon, and it is very good. I really, really love it. Amen. And I watch Super Bowl almost every day. Praise the Lord. But in season three, you'll see what Super Bowl. Is you look up Super Book and Samuel for those that are on YouTube. And it shows you the first assignment that Samuel had. Mind you, the baby was seven years old. We're going to jump back in the lesson, but I just want to prepare you for what the growing looked like. Because the next part we're going into in verse number 19 says, And Samuel grew. So think about it. The man that raised you, now you've got to talk to that man and let him know that God is not pleased with your life. So this is the message that Samuel had to give to Eli. Remember when we said that God was knocking on his door, basically, he was waking him up at night? Reverse now? Well, no, God, this right here is when he gets older. They, they want to show the life of him and we get, as we get into the last part. But I just wanted to give you some information on what his first assignment was, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. Samuel's very first assignment was to speak. Y'all remember I told you that Eli was asleep, Samuel was asleep? And Eli, Samuel kept waking up because he thought he heard Eli calling him. But it wasn't Eli, it was the Lord. Eli figured out that, you know, it's the Lord calling him. And so he said, next time when you go back to bed, I want you to say, speak, Lord, I'm listening. Yeah. Yeah. This is what the Lord said to him, paraphrasing it. 
I'm judging Eli and his sons. I'm killing you and your sons. Imagine you being a child have to deliver that kind of message to the priest. This great priest that you looked up to. This is what he's basically having to say. God is not pleased because here's what happened. Eli allowed his sons to get away with doing ungodly things in God's house. And he never judged them for it. He never dealt with them for it. And so God raised up Samuel to be a mouthpiece to tell Eli what thus says the Lord. He says he's not pleased. Not only will you, you not live out your days, but your sons will be cut off as well. This is what Samuel had to say. And you imagine you're seven years old and you're trembling. You have to give this to the great apostle, to the great priest, to the great chief, to this. And you're like, and Samuel said, Eli told him, he said, I want you to tell me the truth. Don't lie to me. Tell me everything God said. And this baby had to stand up to the man of God and tell him, this is what God said. Because no matter what, what you going to do, kill him? That baby had to learn the voice of God. He sat there and heard every word. Do you not know how you have to carry such a powerful word and you're seven years old? And you have to tell someone that God is going to take you out because he's not pleased with your life? Mm. He also said that there is no sacrifice. There's no repentance. Mm. Wow. You know, in the Old Testament, they would sacrifice animals for their sin when they did wrong things. God yeah. said for Samuel to tell the great Eli that there is no sacrifice. That you can do. You are doomed. Amen. Your dead lot is done. Right. And I'm taking you and your sons out. There's no, don't even repent because I'm not going to hear that. No, no, no. You're way past that. See, and this is something on another note, and I'm jumping back into the lesson. This is why we got to be careful when we stand behind the podium, when we stand behind the pulpit, because God doesn't just deal with us and, oh, I'm going to do this. No, because you carry a title, He's yeah. coming for us all. Because you're in the eye of the people. And this is why we, as people of God, you as professing God, don't just say as the ones with the title, but you walk around, I'm saying, yes, I'm giving out tithes, I'm giving out tracks. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But be mindful that you're living a life that you preach about. Amen. Because when God's judgment comes, he deal harder for those of us that say that I'm a disciple of the Lord. I follow the Lord. Amen. I'm a Christian. He's coming harder for us. Why? Because you got the eyes of the world on you. And what God said to Samuel was, I have to deal with Eli and his house because I need the people to fear God. This is a message that God was waking him up at seven years old and was saying, it's time for me to talk to you. Let's jump to verse 19. And Samuel grew. This is the part of the growing process. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him. And did let none of his words fall to the ground. That means he spent time in God's presence. You ever heard voices talking to you and you could not see those voices? And we learned as we got older that you ain't crazy. It's Holy Spirit warning you. Sometimes it can be the enemy, sometimes it can be God. I ask people, whenever voices are speaking to you, discern where it's coming from. How do I know if it's the right voice to speak to me? What is it telling you to do? Because the devil ain't going to tell you to go and repent. So you know that's God. The devil ain't going to tell you, oh, I, I, I need to give my tithe. I know I, know I want to go on this shop with people. Let me give God what belongs to him first. That ain't the devil. Amen. Now you can identify what's talking to you. Once you identify what's talking to you, then you know how to respond. Amen. So let's go on. And y'all stop me. Questions, comments? My young people, y'all should have, I think y'all got like three or four pages of literature and crossword puzzles on this Samuel lesson. Amen. So y'all take it in because I'm going to ask you what you got out of the lesson. Praise God. You already know. See, why you, why you, look, look at Aaliyah. Bless her heart. She acting like she is. So she ain't never been here before. We're going to pray for you, boo. Mm -hmm. In verse number 20, and all Israel from Dan even to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. He didn't need a whole big ceremony, no nothing. They knew that he was who he said he was by what God allowed to happen through his mouth. If you look back up at 19, and Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and did let none of his words fall to the ground. 
So from the age of seven until the time that he is born, even now, God spoke to him and he only said what God said to say. And the people knew that he was established. The people didn't say, well, I wonder if he real. I wonder if he this. No, no, no. They knew because of what God allowed to happen through Samuel. Yes, ma'am. And I know you don't want no mic, so I ain't going to bring you one. <laughs> um, you know, that's so true. That's so true. Whatever in the Bible is, is, is true. It's true in the life. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this uh, prophet was prophesying. She never saw me in her life. I never saw her. And she said, she said, you're going to this place. And she said, um, you know, they don't like you. Mm -hmm. I said, I had an idea. You know, I had, you know, you got good feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, something ain't right. Okay, I said, yeah. Okay, they said, um, now, it's a family. Now, we need to tell them if they don't get right with the Lord, God gonna kill them, kill them, kill them up. Come on. I said, okay, all right. So now, I had to try to, try to find a way of trying to tell them. Whether they listen or not, you told them. That's right. They don't get it right. Something, something wasn't right. That lady ain't never seen them. My God. She ain't never seen me. I said, okay. So I, I told them, but they stopped falling. My God. Wow. You serious? Serious. Wow. My Lord. Not, I mean, a warning I, come I, I, from the Lord of Christ. A warning come from the Lord of Christ. And it hurts you. <laughs> yeah. 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 And you know yeah. what? Something she said, and many things she said got my attention. Now, if you listen to what she said, a person out of nowhere, she's never met this person, told her what was going on around her. And the, literally, who would go to to say, God said, get your house in order. He's going to deal with you and your family. Who wants to deliver a word like that? But do you not know he has she not done it? God would have dealt with her. Hey, and if man. something would have happened hey, to him, and, it, and she didn't say what God said, say, the blood would have been required in your hand. God think you have to say. And can I, can I help y'all with something else? She don't have a title. Amen. 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 So I want all of us to understand that God can speak to any of us. Yeah. Once we yeah. identify the voice. Yeah. Yeah. God used someone to come along and confirm a word. Yeah. That person couldn't get to the people. They wasn't close enough. They wouldn't have heard them no way. Because who is you? What's you? Y'all know how we do. Who are you? <laughs> but if his grandma coming and crying, or if his auntie coming and crying, saying, I couldn't sleep last night. This is what the Lord said. You got to do something with it. We're going to take that more to heart because I know you. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And so she had to release that word to her family, yeah. to people she loved. That's right. So I just want us to understand, once you discern where it's coming from, the devil and I don't tell you to set your house in order. God's coming through there. The last time God sent a word like that in our family, it was my great, my grandma. And many lives, many people alive lost their lives and was paralyzed mm -hmm. as a result of being disobedient. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you that we got to really hear when God sent that love. That's called love. Amen. If you're doing something wrong and I'm telling you, listen, baby, you got to get in order. God not pleased with this. Don't just think because it's coming nice that, oh, God, they, oh, da, 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 da. no, you didn't try to make it. Remember what she said? She tried to say it as nice as she could. How am I say this? Yeah, yeah. If God had said it, okay, here's what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, also, you know, I would like to God to show me some stuff. You know, you kept saying, clean out your house. Clean out your house. Clean out my house. Clean out my house. What's up? Mm. And then you know I let it go, let it go. Clean out my house. Clean out my house. Clean up your house. I said, so I just start just, just cleaning. Putting stuff down like the closet. Just put, and really I found some stuff my that was in my house. Amen. And uh, I said, okay, I see what you're talking about now. You know, I mean, it, it was. God got away. You know, it was substance. You know, it was substance that 
you know, when I'm away, and you come in. Yes. And I know we would do come in, but still, we kept saying clean out your house, you know? Like, you know, like you say, he didn't understand. He ain't gonna understand right now. Right. But as he keep talking to you, you ain't gonna keep listening to it, then they ain't gonna do nothing about it. Right. You gonna check, check it out. Keep seeking. That's right. And she kept seeking until she was able to find to help somebody. Amen. This is what God is all about. He was somebody to help somebody. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I was brought to my remembrance when we was at Waffle House. Maybe a year ago. And uh, probably came through when we talked to to Jonathan that Israel did put away Balaam and Asherah 
and serve the Lord only. The same illustration, I thank you, uh, Beth, because you didn't even know that that was going to line up with what needed to happen next. How do I know if I have strange gods, um, Mia, in my life? The Lord will begin to speak and say, Shekinah, he may say in your prayer, look, like he told Auntie, clean up your house. Well, what you mean, clean up your house? Clean up. Check under your bed. Look under your bed. This time the Lord told me certain things. And I'm like, what does that mean? Just like he did, what does that mean? You don't just stop right there because you know it's God speaking. What you going to do, you're going to ask God, show me. Show me what you're talking about. You keep seeking because the voice won't stop. God won't stop plucking as you go do this. You ever been going down, driving down the road, and you knew every time I go to this destination, this is the way I go. But this day, I feel the voice speaking to me saying, I don't need to go this way. I need to go that way. Then you get to your destination to learn, oh, there was a major accident or something happened. Sometimes you maybe, maybe there's a particular, a particular place you always go. And God's trying to save your life. You never know what's going on. But the point I'm making is with the little G gods. Amen. This is what we have to be careful. Amen. I want to hit that point real quick because we're moving on out of the lesson. What is a little G God? Amen. The Bible says to have no other gods before me. Good morning. The Bible says to have no other gods before me. That means a G God is anything we put ahead of God. It can be our job. It can be the young lady that we dating, the young man you dating. It can be uh, um, your husband, your wife, anything. Your money. What do we put over God? And he told them, Samuel, this young man, this young kid, probably a teenager at this point, because I don't know what age is, I have to research it to see. But he's telling the nation, if you turn your heart back to me. Amen. And the reason why I'm looking at every age, Josiah, the Lord is saying to you today, if you turn your heart back to me, each and every one of us, he's saying, if you turn your heart back to me, we made other things God before him. We have done it. What things do we put, say, and make an excuse? I can't pray today because of this. I, I can't get my, my tithes because of this. I, I can't be nice to that Samaritan because of this. I would help that drunkard, but but this. What excuses have we made little gods over our big God? He says to us, not me saying to you, God is saying to us through his word. In my closing, because we'll have to read the rest of the lesson later on. Go ahead, Auntie. Clean out your closet. Clean out your closet. Have no other God before me. Amen. Thank God for what he's doing in our lives. Amen. 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 Amen.
Sir, and also I want to say this, the Lord told me to remind us of this, that when we have G-Gods, it's not only our wives, our schools, our games, our our basketball, our this and our that, our, the young lady that we like, the young man we like, but it can be our attitude. Amen. That's how we can make little G-Gods. Oh, this is the way I am, and, and I, I can't get over myself. I just, I just got an attitude. I, I got, I got anger issues. I suffer with depression. The devil is alive. The Bible gives us verses. Not only that, let's get therapy. Let's get counseling. Amen. Let's not make an excuse to just say this is how I am. We can also get verses on depression, oppression. Anxiety, worrying. Let's not just accept these things and say this is a part of me. The devil is alive. Let's get some natural therapy and let's get some spiritual therapy too. Amen. Do both of them. Amen. So we can be free. But we we make all these things little G gods over the big God. And we have to stop. This is what the man of God said in verse number seven and three of that verse. Um, 1 Samuel 7 and 3 And Samuel spoke unto all the house of Israel Saying If ye do return unto the Lord with all your hearts Then put away the strange God And ask it from among you And prepare your hearts unto the Lord And serve him only And he Then he And he Will deliver you out of the hand of the Philistines then the children of Israel did put away Balaam and Asherah and serve the Lord only. And Samuel said, gather all Israel to Mizpah and I will pray for you unto the Lord. Skipping down to verse 10. And Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. This is happening while the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord, they didn't even have to fight this battle. Check this out. This is what happened after they surrendered the little G-Gods, after they repented. So let nobody tell us that we're too far along that we can't get it right. The devil is a liar. Oh, yeah. Let's repent and help yeah. the devil of God and put us back on track with That's this right. plan. Amen. Amen. So this is what happened as a result of them repenting. They didn't get big guns. They didn't get big knives. They didn't get bombs. They repented. Amen. And when they repented, they gave God access to fight for them. Amen. You don't believe me? Everybody should have had a lesson. What, where are you listening at, baby? Uh, she kind of gave her a lesson. Thank you, baby. Verse 10. And Sam, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering. Let's go on verse 10 with me. I don't see it in your hand. I'm looking to be a girl. Let me come back now. Do it. Okay. <laughs> I need y'all to have y'all wedding. You never know what you're going to go through. Amen. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord, but the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. In other words, because I saw the movie, praise God. What happened was, as they repented to the Lord, imagine all of y'all are the army coming to me. And the man of God told me, if you turn your heart to me, if you repent, I repent. I put away those little G-gods. I put away those things that aren't best. And I started throwing away what God was showing me in my house that was not clean and that he didn't want in my house. Now I'm serving you, Lord. Now the man of God is offering sacrifices. Because this is what they did in that day. They had the burnt sacrifice. While the Lord is breathing on the sacrifices, their enemies are coming to take them out. Now they didn't have to fight the enemy. They didn't have to beat them down and do none of that. All they did was repent. When they repented, it set up the atmosphere for their enemies to be taken out. So what happened was the enemy started getting scared. They got smitten. They started running away. Brother Jesse, see, he's going to have to be me and you think, they ain't catch me. Until they ain't get it. They ain't get it. I'm done and I'm closing. But I want us to understand I didn't have to fight. They didn't have to fight in this battle. The key was they repented. The only way for them to defeat the Philistines was for them to repent and turn back to God. And then the men of God began to start praying on their behalf. But they could not turn back to God if there was the other stuff still in their life. And so when they repented to the Lord, the Philistines was coming. I'm about to take them out. 
I feel like I got to demonstrate. Joe, Joe Sire, come here, baby. Come here, sir. With your handsome self. Come here, my guy. Man of God. Come on here, man of God. Jonathan, come on here, brother Jonathan. I need you real fast. You're you going to have to represent um, uh, Samuel today. Now, Josiah is representing the people of God. Amen. And all of y'all are the Philistines coming up against them. Josiah, brother Josiah, I want you to go to here to the prophet Samuel. Amen. And as I want y'all to kind of act it out like you're repenting and you like you're praying for him because this is what the people of God did. They told them to repent. Amen. The enemies is coming, by the way. So imagine a pit bulls. Your enemies run after you full courts. And all of this repenting and sacrificing is going on while your enemies is coming. And some of them are like, but, 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 no, you got to repent. I can't do nothing. Can I help us? Some of us are tired of our own prayers because we just won't repent. I'm just saying, we won't repent and let it go. It ain't that, they didn't do wrong. Yeah, they did wrong, but they hold up your blessing. Samuel, the prophet of God, couldn't do nothing until they repented and turned the little G-gods away and threw them out of the house. Cleaned their closet, cleaned their house. So this is what happened. And now he's offering you offer the sacrifices up and you're praying as he's offering the sacrifices. And we are the Philistines coming up against them. So y'all go ahead and act that out real quick. He's praying. He's, he's the people of God. You're praying. And while you're praying, you offer the sacrifices. There you go, use it. There you go. There you go. Meanwhile, the enemy coming, and this is what's going on in the spirit. This is what's going on. This is what I want us to see. This is why the enemy don't want you to repent. This is why the enemy don't want you to pray. This is why the enemy don't want us to clean up our spiritual closets. He don't want us to let people place the things go that's getting in our way because he wants the enemy to take us over. And if we don't clean up, the devil got a right to come up and beat us across the head. He got a right because we gave him access because we wouldn't repent. But when they repented and they are now done what they're supposed to do, while that's happening, y'all started running the other way and you got fearful all of a sudden. Don't know why am I scared? I can't fight them. And so here's what's happening. Thank y'all very much. So as that happens, the word of God says that they begin to start running after their enemies and taking them out. But let me ask y'all a question in my closing. Did they get more knives? No. Did they get more guns? What was their weapon of defense? The thunder. And what caused the thunder? What did they have to do? Pray and repent. So the repentance calls the enemy to run. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. So I just want us to understand the power of repentance. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble 
say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord.
why we've been seeking God's face for each and every one glory to God those that have been business those that are members those that are family those that are supporters we've been here praying not just for ourselves but we've been here praying on your behalf as well and I want to just let us know why we've been praying see I'm going to tell you something as you came through that door today I pray that God has met you I pray that God has put on each and every one of us and I say to us as Samuel said in our Sunday school lesson if we turn our heart back to God if we put aside those little cheap gods that God will fight for us he will hear our prayer he will draw us closer to him glory to God the image we see today we will not see anymore glory to God if it is his will to take it out he will deal with it
Oh! 
young Caesar, he said, get the men on the bike. And we ain't stopped with the man. He said, get the young people on the bike. Because the young people got to fight for their generation. And they got to know how to pray. So a prayer book has been given to each family on the sound of our voice. And if you don't have one, get one for us. We have challenged for young people over the summertime. This is your Pentecost. You don't have the school, you don't have the homework, anything else. Get your prayer and begin to get in your prayer daily. Sing your prayer, let your voice be heard. Because God has something to say through our young people. Hallelujah. We want to hear what thus says the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It's time now for the word of God. Singing is all right. Shouting is all right. But God, but we got to know what God's word says. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I encourage you, if you don't have your Bible or your devices with your Bibles on, and please raise your hand at one of these lovely women of God. 